how to differentiate sine and cosine. This is actually very easy and I also posted an, another video on YouTube where the users wrote me, okay, the picture you use is very useful since I just have to memorize the picture and then I know how it works, right? So uh, I'm going to show you the picture in a second. I'm also ta I also will also talk about this picture later in the video when I explain you how to do this and with the, some examples. So really, one picture, you just memorize it and it's it's actually it's a square and then you will know how it works forever and you will never make a mistake again hopefully so the trick is this you just have sign when you want to make a derivation of sign then you have cosine and when you have cosine and you make a derivation then you have minus sign and when you do the derivation of minus sign then you have minus cosine and when you do the derivation of minus cosine, you will receive again sine. So it's a square, and it's the only thing you have to memorize about the differentiation of sine and cosine. And when you keep this in mind, you will also be able to do the integration, since integration is such that's just upside down, so you will turn like this, and you don't see it anymore on the back. It's just the other way around, right? Differentiation. And I think when you keep this in mind, even if you don't really understand how it works with, with this kind of wave function, I mean, it's also possible to, to prove it when you have a look at, look at the wave function. But of course, keeping this in mind, you will be able to calculate exercises of this type very quickly in the exams. And I think this is also quite important since this is something you can learn by heart. This is not really difficult. Usually in exams, you have a lot of topics which you cannot learn by heart, where you really have to combine and think and transfer knowledge. So this is something it's very difficult to prepare, but this is something you can prepare, you can practice up front, so there's no excuse of not knowing this. I'm going to show you how it works in a second. How to differentiate sine and cosine. Actually, it's not very difficult. All you have to remember is a rectangle, which looks like the following. So this is our rectangle. And we start with sine at the top, sine. And if we differentiate sine, we are going to get cosine. If we want to differentiate cosine, we will get minus sign. If we differentiate minus sign, we will get minus cosine. And again, if we differentiate minus cosine, we will receive again sign. So this is all you have to remember if you want to differentiate sine and cosine. It always works the same. And why is that? I'm going to, to give you a short introduction to it, but it's actually, if you forget the square, you can also uh, think about it. It's not that difficult. So, for example, just uh, to, to draw a small picture for you. How does it look like? Okay, first let's draw a sign. So it will look like something something like this. And we have one here. Okay, this should be minus one here. And the way it works is we look at it at the slope and we see okay here we have maximum negative slope which will be then a minus one. We see here we have zero slope, which is here, and here we see we see maximum positive slope, which is here. Here we see zero slope, and here maximum positive slope again. So now we have the dots, and we see that this is a smooth transition between the dots. So we can, uh, okay, this is maybe a little bit rough, but then the way it looks like, we already see it, of course, we have the square, then we might know it immediately. The way it looks like is something like this. 
And if you remember how cosines looks like, this is it. Cosine. This is cosine. And here we said this is sine. And the same again we can do with the cosine. Cosine looks like we just drew it. Uh, almost. And again we can say the we have here we have zero, that's for sure. Here we have negative maximum slope. So minus one, one plus one. Here we have zero again, so something like this. Here maximum positive slope again, here uh, zero slope again. So the way it looks like is something like this. Positive, something like this. And this, if we, if we remember the sign, then we can just imagine we flip the thing around the x axis and then we receive minus sign. And the other one we just said was cosine. So that's how it works. This is just to explain this, the, the rectangle, but I think, especially in the exams, it's much easier just to remember the rectangle and with the rectangle you can calculate it very quickly. You can differentiate sine and cosine very, very quickly. If you forget about it and you need to differentiate it, then you might remember these two pictures and then you can do it. So it's not it's not too difficult, but I, I would suggest, especially in the beginning, just remember the rectangle. Okay, so finally, let's calculate some simple example. And the example is like the following. So we have a function, three times sine three x. And we want to differentiate. So how to differentiate? We just need to, okay, three, this is just a factor. So three stays three. Sinus, as we remember, our rectangle, sinus becomes cosinus. Uh, sine becomes cosine. So three times cosine which is right of course, and 3x, this also remains, times, now don't forget the inner derivative, which is 3, so 3 times 3 is 9 times cosine 3x. And there we have it. So it's actually not too difficult, and to prove it we can differentiate again, so second derivative is yeah works exactly the same we have factor times cosine and cosine becomes minus sine so we have minus sine three x and we shouldn't forget the inner derivative which is three times three and then the result is 3 times 9, 27, minus 27, so we uh, have to remember the minus here, and uh, then we receive minus 27 times sine 3x. It's that easy. So I, I would just recommend you to learn by heart this rectangle, and to be able, if you have to, to draw these two pictures, but not maybe not in an exam where you just have to differentiate sine, sine or cosine, and so with a with a rectangle you can be pretty fast in exams, and it's not that difficult if if you just remember how it works. Right. Thanks for watching. Practice makes perfect. Further exercises with solutions you can find on my website, which is www.worksheets.com